Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. Some people are really good at putting things together with their hands. Some people are really good at mathematics. Some people are great public speakers and some people can write excellent papers. We all have pros and cons or strengths and weaknesses. This video is inspired by an email, a short one, that I recently received. So I'm going to read the email in its entirety and then I'm going to do my best to answer it and hopefully I can address this mathematical weakness because you might have this problem too and hopefully after watching this video you'll have some tips that you can follow to help you overcome this. Also, if you have any advice for people, leave a comment in the comment section below. Okay, here's the email. The person's name is Tony. The subject is suggestion for YouTube video, my own biggest enemy. So that's pretty cool. You gave me the title and everything. I'll have to figure out a title for this video. I haven't really thought about it. I just wanted to answer this email, but thank you. My own biggest enemy. Yeah, it's definitely a math enemy. The enemy of mathematics, that's what it is. Thanks for your great videos on YouTube. Do you have any advice for students who become their own biggest enemy by getting tunnel visioned through solutions and miss simple issues? I find myself going too fast through solutions. When I see something that I think is obvious, I hit it to get it out of the way. In many cases, I've made an assumption or didn't think the whole solution through carefully enough. I know that I need to slow down but I chide myself for it and it's a constant battle. Thanks, Tony. So Tony is talking about something that I suffer from also or suffered. I've gotten better at it, but I still have issues with it. And it's the fact that I rush through things. I rush through things. I rush through solutions. I have a hard time taking my time. And that is a skill, Tony, that you're going to have to work on. I first discovered this about myself. I discovered this weakness when I was in graduate school. I had a friend there who was very, very smart. And I don't know where he is today. Great guy, really brilliant. And he was a slow thinker. He was able to think slowly. And through that slow thinking, he was able to accomplish a lot. Uh, on our first topology test, he actually did really bad because he didn't finish the test. He was able to speed up and end up with one of the highest grades in the class but he was naturally slow. You might say, slow, that's not good. Well, it is, because by being a slow thinker, he was able to basically dissect proofs and just think a little bit more carefully. And when you think carefully, you tend to avoid those little mistakes that Tony's talking about. So by working with him and by studying with him, I became aware of my weakness and I told myself, hey, let me slow down. Let me really think about what's happening in the problem. What do I have? What am I trying to show? Let me just write a little bit slower, you know, move the pencil slower. Literally try to slow down your thinking, which is the opposite of me. I'm like 100% go, go, go. I drink tons of coffee. I talk fast. I do math fast. So that's who I am. So it's anti my personality. So it's something I have to work extra hard for. Same thing with Tony. Tony seems to have the same issue. He's just a fast person. He's a fast thinker, which is good, which means that you're, you're relatively smart and you're able to do things quickly, but you see where it hurts you because you have to be smart enough to realize to slow down. So my advice is, well, one, you're already doing it. You're aware of the situation. You're aware of the fact that you have to slow down, right? Be painfully aware of it. Take your time, take your time. And I've seen this with a lot of students over the years. I've taught hundreds probably of math classes over the years at college. And I've seen students who are really smart and they'll finish the test in 20 minutes. They'll turn in the test and they'll have all kinds of mistakes. And they think, no, and I, I, countless experiences when someone hands me the test and I say, are you done? Are you sure you're done? And they're like, yeah, I'm done. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to check it over? And they're like, no, no, I'm done. I look at their test and I immediately find mistakes and they do it again and again and again. So the key is, Tony, to learn from your mistakes and realize that you're just moving too fast. You just have to slow down. Something else that might help you is if you find study partners. That's really, really what triggered it for me was working with someone who 
was very, very slow at mathematics. And by slow, I don't mean bad at mathematics. This person was brilliant. Slow in the sense that they work through problems more carefully. So try to find people like that. Try to surround yourself with other people. When you study with other people, you will see how they attack problems and that can help you in your thinking and in your problem solving processes. So yeah, that's my advice. It's the enemy of mathematics, right? You have to be patient. You have to take your time. You have to go slow. And unfortunately, you know, educational institutions, the world, the world does not really support that because when you're in a classroom setting, you have a certain amount of time and you have to learn all of this material and you have to study for a test when it would be better if you could just take your time and take all day and work on things. But that's what I'm advocating here, right? I'm saying that when you have time, take your time, think through problems slowly, and it's gonna help you greatly. So yeah, if you have any advice for Tony, leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you wanna learn mathematics, I do have courses, they're on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you get them, please use the links from my website as it helps me greatly. Also, I've lowered the prices to make them as low as possible. So when you click my links, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get a very low price. And if you take away anything from this video, it's that the enemy of mathematics is really impatience, right? You have to be patient with mathematics. You have to take your time and that's how you learn, right? Take your time. Even, even writing slower, like, you know, let epsilon be greater than zero. Just write carefully, learn to think carefully. It is a skill. And if you're really fast at mathematics and you make careless mistakes, force yourself to slow down and it's going to totally change things. Even in testing situations, if you're already finishing a test early and you're making mistakes, when you slow down and when you take your time, it's gonna make such a huge difference. So yeah. Oh, and if you want to subscribe, subscribe if you want to. And if you're wondering about the hat, I got it at uh, an estate sale for like a dollar or something. And I thought I should just make a video with it. Just one video, because you know, I am the math sorcerer, so I'm supposed to have a sorcerer's hat. I actually had a full robe and hat, but I lost it. So yeah, plus it makes me better at mathematics. No, it doesn't really, it doesn't. Until next time, good luck. Keep doing mathematics. Almost forgot, since this is a video about thinking, and I have a book here on thinking, I thought I would just show it to you. It's called Thinking Fast and Slow. It's a great book, and I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. It's very well written, great book. I'm still reading it, so yeah. It's also really inexpensive because it's not a textbook. So it's like a newer book, which is not something that I typically talk about here on the channel. It's not a math book. It's called Thinking Fast and Slow. Kind of an interesting book. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.